fundamentals of domestication, self-domestication, and ultimately attachment that you definitely need to be aware of. So domestication in its simplest form is how you learnt to manage, cope and deal with situations when you were younger. And when you were younger, you had to get yourself into a position whereby you're literally learning how to survive and how to be. And therefore, in doing so, you get subjected to those around you and everything that they bring to the table from their own experiences. And the problem with that is we learn how to interact with ourselves through interactions early on with others. And the problem that we have with that is how are they interacting with themselves that then ultimately leads to them interacting with you. And when we learn that domestication can have positive effects, but primarily it depends on your own background, your own life lessons and your own learning as to exactly what you're then subject to. And in some cases, these things are positive in nature overall, but from a place of in the moment and living in the moment, they can be perceived as negative or not necessarily beneficial for your growth and your own personal development until later on in life when you come back to reviewing it and therefore dealing with whatever it brought up in those early years. And with domestication, what you do is you learn that in certain scenarios and situations, there are things that you can do and things that you can't do. So let's say, for instance, you were correct in terms of how you were portraying something, in terms of your answers, in terms of how you viewed something, and you ended up in disagreement with everybody else. Well, everybody else has to remain true to themselves in the same way that you have to attempt to remain true with yourself. And then what happens is they then shut you down because they know enough to think that they're right, but they ultimately don't know enough to know that they're wrong. And then because of that cycle, you end up then playing a certain role in somebody else's movie in order to then remain consistent with the character that they make you, which is ultimately your own personal character that you've made yourself from a place of choosing your own experiences. And with this, we then have the whole domestication side then gets very tricky because we then learn things backwards or incorrectly or the conditioning that's kind of applied to it then becomes a bit hazy. So when you're taught to exist, you don't get taught all the variables that are the conditioning of other factors that can then become involved in that actual setup. So you might have been correct for most of your life, but you were always told that you were wrong. Now you quote unquote, don't know an awful lot of the time. And when you don't know, there are two ways that that can actually present itself. There's a I don't know because I don't want to be wrong, so therefore I don't make an answer or I don't state an answer. But you've also got the other side, whereas there is, I don't want to be wrong even if I'm right, and therefore I have to then put myself in a position to not say anything because of some punishment or some inaccurate experience from childhood that meant, well, when you speak up and you are correct, you then get shut down. So with those two scenarios, you've then got the same underlying concept, but ultimately they play out differently. But when you're older, what it means is that you get to the point where you know, because you've had to deal with certain instances and certain scenarios, like say at work where you get put into a managerial position or a kind of head of department position, or you're in like a team leader role, and yet you have to make these types of decisions. But yet when it comes to it on the face of it, you're not able to make those decisions because of the fact this underlying subconscious behavior is still there when it comes to an environment which isn't as chaotic. And therefore, when you're in a safe environment, it makes you wonder exactly what's what. And then what happens is after that domestication sets in and after that's been there for a while, you end up with self-domestication. And self-domestication comes in when you yourself take on the identity of the person that domesticated you in the first place. 
therefore you're self-critical. Therefore, they don't need to be around or the face changes or it's a colleague or it's a partner or it's somebody making a random comment that you overhear in the street. But yet it triggers that same nervous system response from when you actually learnt it way back when from a place of domestication. And now because they're no longer around, you assume that you can create the same outcome even though the scenario is different. And because that scenario is ultimately different, you then have to get to the position whereby you're now acting from a place of, this is a new scenario and a new situation. But the problem with nervous system responses and all of these traumas or misaligned actions from childhood is that we don't then know whether we are then correct, we are right, we have other options that are available to us, and subsequently, the only thing that we can do is play the role that we've always played. And when we play that role that we've always played, it gets to a point where in childhood it was promoting you or it was protecting you. But now, later on and all these years later on, it starts to punish you because it's coming up for triggering and for healing. And that healing element is exactly what we need to grab hold of because it is the opportunity to shift that identity and therefore learn how to be from a totally new standpoint and a place of actual growth and actual development. And then once we've got this self-domestication identified and known, then we end up running these habits and patterns and behaviours from the place of solely to correct them. And therefore, moving forward, we can then address what is then the attachment. And the attachment is that safety. It's that known factor that is, well, if I do this and if I control these things, then I know what the outcome is. And if I know what the outcome is, then there's a false sense of security and a false sense of safety that then comes from it. And when we look at that attachment, that's what keeps the cog spinning. Because the attachment is that false feeling that has been put there because you don't yet have the identity outside of what's going on and what's happening because you haven't yet gone back to work out whether or not there's self-domestication or potential domestication. And then when we have a look at detaching, what we do is we have an identity crisis and that identity crisis itself then causes further problem because we then have to go and attack ourselves in the same way we were originally perceived to have been attacked when we learned the actual domestication element in the first place. And because we've created that identity around it all, then we have to make sure that we're careful in terms of unpiecing and re-piecing these jigsaw pieces together. Because we have to ultimately find out exactly who we are based on these lessons and learning in order to then detach from the attachment, then make sure that we're not self-domesticating. And then from that place of self-domestication not being there, then the original domestication element then also falls away. But if you've got any questions, if you can relate, or if you have your own personal experiences, or you do find yourself saying, I don't know a lot, then maybe this is worth actually watching back and see what comes up for you. But as always, until next time, trust the process, and it's bye for now.